Hello friends. Today I will tell you about the most cruel sultan in the history of the Ottoman Empire. You will learn why he was feared and how his terror affected the empire. Statistics show that many people watch my videos without a subscription. If you are interested in the history of the Ottoman Empire and want to learn a lot about the life of the sultans and the harem, then subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications, then you will not miss a single new video on my channel. Murad IV was born on July 27, 1612. He was the third son of Sultan Ahmed I and Kozum Sultan, 17th Sultan of the Great Ottoman Empire. After the death of his older brothers and the deposition of his feeble-minded uncle Mustafa, Murad became Sultan in 1623. Since Murad ascended the throne at the age of only 11, all power was in the hands of his mother, the great Valide Kozum Sultan and her subjects. Kozum officially received the title of regent and ruled the empire under Murad for almost 10 years. In 1632, Murad took control of the empire in his own hands, depriving Kozum of the regency. The first 10 years that Murad was in power became a period of great crisis in the Ottoman Empire. On November 18, 1631, the Genissaries and Saipas revolted and demanded that the Grand Vizier Hafiz Ahmed Pasha, the Mufti, and 17 officials and favorites of the Sultan be handed over to them. The new Vizier Recep Pasha persuaded the Sultan to give them Hafiz and all the others, saying that, the head of the Grand Vizier is better than the head of the Sultan. Murad played for time as best he could. But Hafiz Ahmed Pasha, devoted to him, decided to sacrifice himself and went out to the rebels himself. He was brutally killed, having received 17 wounds and losing his head. Intoxicated with permissiveness, the Genissaries waged a bloody massacre for several months. Sultan Murad and Kozum Sultan, hiding in the top copy palace, watched with horror these terrible events that took place in the capital. This rebellion, kindled by the Genissaries, instilled in Murad hatred for them and gave birth to a cruel ruler in him, who carried out a bloody revenge. He began to act on the principle of, kill or be killed. Upon learning that Recep Pasha was the instigator of a riot, he ordered that his head be cut off. The corpse of Recep was thrown out of the gates of the palace. This act scared the rebels. They realized for the first time that the Sultan would deal with every traitor. Murad established total control over the population. Wine, tobacco and coffee were banned. All coffee shops and drinking establishments were closed. Sultan Murad personally monitored the observance of his decree. Disguised as a tramp, he went out into the city and asked merchants to sell him tobacco. Murad personally killed the one who agreed. Once a gardener and his wife caught him smoking a hookah. Murad ordered that their legs be cut off and that these bleeding people be exposed to the public, so that no one would be in the habit. In general, Murad severely punished for non-fulfillment of his decree. People were impaled for drinking wine. They cut off their nose for smoking. Ears were cut off for listening to obscene songs. Gradually, Sultan Murad moved from the execution of the guilty to terror. His cruelty made him the legendary, bloody Sultan. He drowned several women for having loud fun on the shore. He cut off the head of a court musician for playing a Persian melody. He killed the doctor, ordering him to drink a lethal dose of opium. And the messenger, who mistakenly told him that the Sultana instead of a son gave birth to a daughter, he pierced with a spear. However, this tyranny of Murad had a positive effect on the empire. Officials of all ranks were afraid of him and did not weave their intrigues. Military affairs were also going well. In 1635, Sultan Murad IV went on a military campaign against Iran. In a short time he took possession of Tibris, Yerevan, Nakhchivan. But these triumphant victories were redeemed by the Turkish troops, who so devastated the territories they had occupied that they deprived themselves of provisions. Murad had to retreat. But in 1638, the Turkish army recaptured Baghdad. This forced the Iranian Shah Sefi I to sign a peace treaty with the Turks. This treaty marked the end of a long conflict between the Ottoman Empire and the Safavid Empire, which began at the beginning of the 16th century and was the greatest achievement of Sultan Murad IV. In 1627, Murad's concubine Aisha Sultan bore him a son, Shahzada Ahmed. Then other sons were born to Murad. He also had 12 daughters. In 1637, a plague broke out in Istanbul, 
during which all the Shahzadas of Sultan Murad IV and his six daughters died. The daughters that survived were married off to the Pasha when they were still children. Some of the Pashas became Grand Viziers. All marriages for her granddaughters were arranged by their grandmother Kozum Sultan. Thus, she tried to strengthen ties with powerful nobles and support the Sultanate of her children. The death of Murad's sons meant that the only heirs to the throne of the Ottoman dynasty were his brothers Qasim and Ibrahim. Both Shahzadas were in custody at Kafs. The eldest of them, Qasim was the next contender for the throne. But Murad ordered his execution. Qasim was strangled on February 7, 1638. He did not touch Ibrahim, because at that time Shahzada was mentally ill and Murad considered him harmless to himself. When Murad was on a military campaign, in 1639 his uncle Mustafa, known to everyone as the Mad Padishah, died. After his death, Ibrahim remained the only contender for the throne. In 1640, sensing the approach of his end, Murad gave the order to execute Ibrahim in order to transfer the throne to the Crimean Khan Bahadur Jiri. The Ottoman dynasty and the Jiri dynasty were tied by family ties, thanks to dynastic marriages. Kozim saved her son Ibrahim from death. She persuaded the Grand Vizier and other Pashas that Ibrahim was the last legitimate heir to the throne. That is why the dying Murad was lied to that his order was carried out and Ibrahim was strangled. Of course, Murad did not believe in this, but he could no longer check and do anything. Sultan Murad IV died of cirrhosis of the liver on February 8, 1640. The throne passed to his brother Ibrahim. I thank you for watching. Give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And continue to stay with me so as not to miss new interesting stories about the Ottoman Empire. See you soon.